Um, I want to get to Carl Case here in a minute, but Michelle, we were talking about you can't get a mortgage. Is that the heart of the matter right now? Would you agree with I, I think that? that's certainly one of the crucial problems is that credit is still very tight, so that restricts housing demand. But I think it's even bigger than that. It's that the economic environment is still weak. Unemployment is high, income growth is low, and job insecurity is high. Mm -hmm. So people are hesitant to enter the housing market right now. Yeah, well, let's talk about Carl Case. Earlier this morning, as he often does on Bloomberg Surveillance, uh, the professor emeritus of Wellesley, Carl Case, uh, joined us and we spoke about his index. I asked him uh, again of the mortgage being the critical critical constraint in the housing market. Well, it's certainly preventing people from going out and buying what is really an affordable package out there right now. If you look at interest rates and you do qualify, and you look at net imputed rent as the basic income, that is the, the services you get from living in the house, incredible amount of subsidy flowing, and it's very cheap to buy houses in these areas where prices have fallen in some cities 56, 60 percent. But they're not out buying at the low end of the distribution because they can't get credit. Uh, Carl Case, Lori, I want to go back to this again, the public policy idea that we need within the uh, subpar economy that we have. Do you see a public policy in 2012? You know, I think basically everything that we're doing on the credit availability side is going exactly the opposite direction. We're talking about making mortgages even harder to get. We're, you know, Dodd-Frank requires us to um, talk about risk retention um, for mortgages that are what they deem to be too risky, which is, um, um, which is under, exactly what that means is under consideration. But chances are that will credit, ch um, will tighten credit availability standards even, even further, further. As is, you know, what is the definition of a qualified mortgage, which is also mm -hmm. required under Dodd Frank? Do you agree in a negative six percent further decline in housing prices? I think uh, probably a little bit weaker. Our baseline view is an eight percent drop, but a little bit. It's, okay. it's comparable. Chart here. No, this is the this is the human factor, folks. Here's U.S. construction employment from OECD, and you can see the trend there going back to 1965. That's a well establish trend and we go just off a cliff and then flatline. I want to ask both of you the question that's the unspeakable question. When are we going to see so-called cram downs? When are we going to see mortgage modifications that matter? Michelle, do we need to see a mortgage modification uh, program where the banks such as your bank take a little bit of a haircut? I don't want you to speak uh, for uh, uh, Bank of America, but in general, do we need to see that? To me, I think the most effective policy that we can see is one that deals with the foreclosure inventory after it's gone through the process. There's a lot of modification efforts. Some are working, some aren't. I think we have to continue in that, in that process. But it's also very important to deal with the liquidations. There's a lot of homes in the shadows, and an efficient process to clear those homes could really be a win-win mm -hmm. for the market. Do you agree on this, Lori, or do you take a more strident stand? The bank's got to play ball here and say take a, a, a mark down and get an equity kicker on the back side. Um, I think you've actually got to do both. Um, you've got to deal with the shadow inventory that's out there that is the borrowers that are so delinquent they can't be saved at this point, the borrowers that are already, already out of their home. But you've also got a lot of borrowers who are defaulting who can be saved and for them you need meaningful modifications and we're actually fortunately beginning to see more of that. But it's still a very, very slow process and largely voluntary. What is different now from the time of William Isaac, where they solved the problem, it appeared quickly relative to this, this tragedy that we're going through. You know, I think we've had years of just kick the can down the road public mm -hmm. policy, and we've got to actually own up and begin to solve the problem. Sure, here we show this a lot. This is population-adjusted new home sales, and there's a trend going back to 1960 or so, and you can see the surge above, way above two standard deviations. A red line is a center tendency. And then, Michelle, off the cliff, you've been way out in front in market economics on this. Is there any glimmer in new home sales? Um, yes, there's a glimmer. I just don't think it's going to be realized next year. The, the challenge with new home sales is that builders are competing with a lot of the property, the existing properties that are selling at a deep discount. So I actually think housing demand could pick up next year, but most of the demand will be for the distressed properties that are selling at a discount rather than for <coughs> new construction homes. Do, do you, should you look at two parts of the housing economy, Lori? Do you, do, you, do you look at the distressed part and then a good part, or do you bundle them all together? I think, you know, there's such heavy substitution that you've got to bundle it you together. you got to bundle them all together. And, yeah. and by the way, the longer new home sales, sales remains at very, very low levels, the quicker this problem clears.
I, I mean, it's still going to be a multi-year process, but I don't think you can mm. look for a rebound in new home sales for years until this problem clears. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, especially, you know, builders are responding to demand for new construction homes. So if demand for new construction homes remains weak, it means housing construction, new homes into the market will also remain at low levels. And that will buy some time for <coughs> demand to pick up for the existing properties. So in our view, we're a good two years away from seeing a real turn in housing construction. Do we have that time, though, to turn? For her statement, within your demographic analysis, do we have time to wait two years? Those people 90 days behind, I would suggest they don't have time to wait. I think we're going to have to take fairly aggressive action over the next couple of years. That includes more aggressive principal reduction, and it also means um, an, an REO, the bulk sales of REO properties to help clear What's the shadows. What's an REO property? Um, real estate owned. It's basically um, properties that are bank uh, that um, that are where the borrower is already out of the home. They're out of the home. And um, bundling those in bulk to help clear <clears throat> the in, to help clear um, the shadow. Is tell me about single family rentals. Is there a change, Michelle? There a is behavioral a behavioral change. change. Absolutely. There's a shift from home ownership to renting that's been ongoing now for the past three, four years, and I think that will continue. Um, and that's really where that, that glimmer of hope comes from. You were talking about in the mm -hmm. construction industry. It's from multifamily construction because there's a move from ownership to renting, mm -hmm. and there's not that many homes for rent right now that are apartments. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a pretty big pickup in multifamily permits and starts, and I think that will persist into the next two years, which could help the right. construction.